Hello and welcome to Turf Truth Tuesday where we take a look at claims in the turf grass industry and ask, are they true? If you are new to the channel, you may like to subscribe to be notified of new content. If there is one thing turf grass bullshitters have in common, it is using issues that have little to no practical significance, to convince you that you have a problem. One such issue is magnesium. Turf grass bullshitters love talking about magnesium. Too little magnesium and the turf grass will be deficient, too much magnesium and the soil pH will go up pH is high because of the magnesium. If we can find a way to push that magnesium off by using this high calcium lime, we can actually change that soil. Don't bullshit me. Or too much magnesium and the soil will be too hard. Uh, we need to balance these soils. And these soils were really, really out of balance. 35% magnesium, 50% calcium. Hard as a rock. Just terrible. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. Or too much magnesium and the soil will be too saturated. The problem when we have lots of those tiny little molecules, those tiny little magnesium molecules, we have tight, wet soils where we don't have good drainage, we have poor root growth, we have low oxygen levels, and that's all bad for crop production and it also means more soil compaction. Everything that guy just says, bullshit. Or too much magnesium and the mud will stick to your boot. If you've ever walked across a muddy soil and it sticks to your boot, it gets really sticky. That's oftentimes uh, a, a high magnesium soil. Boosie, boosie, boosie. Really? When have you walked through mud and had it not stick to your boot? <laughs> of course, this is all bullshit, but it sounds convincing. We don't want to downplay magnesium. It is important and beneficial turf grass responses to applied magnesium can occur particularly on sand-based root zones such as greens or sport pitches that are susceptible to magnesium leaching. But responses to applied magnesium are extremely rare elsewhere. Magnesium nonsense is everywhere and we will address magnesium again briefly in next week's video on soil compaction, but today we are going to address one specific claim from one of the first accounts we ever commented on Twitter, Turf Dietitian. In 2018, they posted some ridiculous blog on manganese, and we had to call out their bullshit. From their reply, we assume they did not like our comment. Oh well. Just like any pure bullshitter, they don't stop easily, and this year they posted another asinine blog, about magnesium. Let's take a look. If you go to Turf Dietitian's website and go to their blog, you will find a blog post about magnesium from January 14, 2021. Scroll down past their irrelevant opinions and scare tactics, and you will get to magnesium's impact on soil. They claim that excessive magnesium will cause devastating effects on soil structure and a buildup of water. They even have a photo of a golf green being squeegeed to help convince you this is true. Now let's look at the next two sentences. Magnesium is a small cation and if it attaches between two soil particles, then oxygen will be pushed out. Certainly, low oxygen can be a problem, and if you are not already convinced that this is a problem, they use phrases like, life-threatening entities, to try to scare you into believing it. But don't worry. We are here to clear up this piffle and show you that turf dietitians claim is almost literally exploding with bullshit. Thanks George. Let's see why. Mike claims that because magnesium is very small, oxygen won't have room and will be pushed out. Clearly, when it comes to magnesium in soils, Mike is here. Let's help Mike out and explain what is going on. It is true that magnesium is a small ion. It is also true that the size of magnesium plays a role in the reduction of oxygen in magnesium saturated soils. But, it has nothing to do with magnesium binding soil particles too closely together, as Mike claims. In fact, it is the opposite. Because the hydration radius of magnesium is greater than calcium, the soil is actually held less tightly together compared with calcium, because the distance between the positive charge of magnesium, and the negative charge of the soil, is slightly greater than with calcium. This results in a slightly less force holding the clay particles together. This can result in clay dispersion if the magnesium saturation is too great. If clay dispersion occurs, soil structure collapses, and the pore size distribution shifts greatly in favor of micropores. This is why magnesium-saturated soils may also lead to poor drainage. However, the likelihood of this occurring under normal conditions is very low, because before this phenomenon can occur, certain conditions must be met. First, the soil must have sufficient quantities of specific clays, if your soil does not have these clays, then excessive magnesium is of little concern. And second, the CEC of your soil must have an amount of magnesium that is unrealistic for field soils. Typical soil magnesium percentages are less than 30% of the CEC, and it has been shown that even when soils are saturated with twice as much magnesium as calcium, that clay dispersion and hydraulic conductivity are only slightly less than when the soil is saturated with calcium. Thus, when magnesium exceeds 50% of the CEC, and sufficient clays are present, then a reduction in drainage and porosity may occur, but 50% magnesium would almost never occur in any soil of agronomic importance. You may work in the turfgrass industry your entire professional career, 
and never encounter a soil with more than 30% magnesium saturation, much less a soil with more than 50%. So, excessive magnesium in your soil is one of the last things you need to be concerned with. It is important to understand the function of magnesium in both soils and turf grasses. But don't be misled by bullshitters trying to convince you that your soil magnesium is too high. Especially when they have no idea what they are talking about. Well that about does it for episode 7. Turf Dietitian Utterly Debunked. Please check back next Tuesday for the last episode of season 1, where we take a look at charlatans trying to sell you remedies for soil compaction. See you then.